Hello, thanks for stopping by. Where to begin this one? Okay, this whole BDST project started probably a year and a half, two years ago when uh, I was using my T4, my Heathkit T4 on an All-American 5 radio and uh, saw sparks because the uh, radio was plugged in the other way around and the chassis evidently was hot. <laughs> and uh, so I decided I wanted to take and see if I could take and make a small solid state uh, signal tracer that would uh, take up lunch, less bed space, you know, be totally isolated, you know, so that it's not connected to the power at all and just be safer. And uh, this is a picture of the, the first unit I made. Uh, I used that particular case because that was the case I had on hand at the time. Uh, this is what the inside looks like. Uh, just a piece of purport at the bottom with the circuit on it. And this was the simple circuit that I took and found on the internet. Uh, it uh, just used an LM380 chip, audio sped directly in, RF took and went through those uh, the diode and the two resistors there on the on the left hand side, and it worked good the majority of the time, but it, it was nowhere near as sensitive in the uh, troubleshooting the RF stages as the T4 had been. So I started looking for, you know, either another circuit or, or something to take and boost this. And I found a, a, another circuit that had a, a JFET front end on it. And this is a picture of the JFET front end that I found. And it's nice and simple. I did some testing with it and it, the, it had, a, you know, a nice gain to it. And I took and built a little uh, daughter board and put it in my original unit and it made it a lot more sensitive on the weak signals and so it, like I said it just basically spliced it in here you can see it on the original circuit just spliced in on the top there the only trouble is on a little bit stronger of a circuit I started getting uh, feedback out of the LM380 And come to find out what was happening is that the, uh, if you look at the, uh, the output of the circuit there, uh, of the JFET, is right where the power comes into it. So it was basically backfeeding through the 15K resistor and 1K resistor to the power uh, of the LM380, and that's what was causing the feedback. So I figured, okay, if I have to take and stop it going back that way, I'll just take and break it there and put a uh, diode in, and that way it, it can't go back and affect the LM380. And that seemed to work really good. But it always bothered me that, you know, that I'd have to do something like that. And especially because the, the original, like the original circuit that I took it from, used an LM386 and he didn't evidently didn't have trouble with it and just as I was getting ready to take and put this together I took and went back and revisited it because it, it started bothering me again why and I took and finally figured out why I've been doing this long enough to go a little deeper in things and in the yellow is this the circuit that I took and borrowed which is everything that you needed for the JFET front end but now if you look in the red there, where the power was coming into the 1K resistor, in the original circuit, he had a 470 microfarad capacitor. Well, with that 470 microfarad capacitor, any feedback from the JFET front end wasn't affecting it. The, that capacitor was absorbing it all, and it wasn't, it wasn't changing the LM386 any. So really, that would have been the proper way rather than going with the diode, but 
like you know I'm like you guys I'm just learning all this stuff and <clears throat> then we ran into another problem with the uh, uh, 10 microfarad capacitor there in the source of the uh, JFET it was causing too much gain on stronger signals and we had to take that out you know and decrease the gain so we weren't overdriving the LM380 and when we took that out that took and decreased the sensitivity again we were almost back to square one again so you know th this was our original uh, JFET front end circuit and I decided that let's go back to square one I'm going to get rid of that you know we're having too much trouble with the JFET front end now you know it, it just seems like as soon as we get one thing straightened out <coughs> excuse me well, something else shows up so I went looking around and this is the front end out of a, an old Heath kit circuit uh, solid state circuit uh, modified for modern components some of the components they used are no longer available type thing so I put this together and uh, on a little daughter board and hooked it up to the LM380 and these are the results I got this was the uh, output this is a, a thousand cycle tone being fed in this was the output using the JFET circuit and I took and adjusted it so that I was getting, you know, right around 100 millivolts at the speaker. Now switching over to the newer circuit, the, the output signal looks just as nice. Only now I'm getting uh, 200, almost 250 millivolts. So it, it's, it, it, I'm getting the amplification back where it should be. Uh, testing the RF this was the RF input signal this is out of my little uh, 455 kilohertz modulated uh, tester that I made and this was using the uh, original the JFET circuit and again I adjusted it you know to get 100 millivolts at the speaker This is the output with the new front end, you know, virtually identical. Only now we're getting 337 millivolts, so we're getting three times the amplification. <coughs> so I really think that, you know, this, you know, we have some boards coming, but I, I'm pretty sure this is what we're going to go with. I, you know, I've overdriven this. This doesn't distort when you overdrive it like the JFET did. Uh... I mean, yeah, if you, if you crank it up a lot, loud enough where you're over distorting the LM380, it's going to distort. But, I mean, good loud volume, there's still no distortion in it. So, And the uh, only other change, really, is with the uh, uh, the probe that Doug and I have been working on. I took and changed the input resistor from uh, 10 kilo ohm to 470 kilo ohm. Because the 10 kilo ohm, I was back, we were having a loading problem again. And just changing that to the 470, it's just as sensitive. You, you can take and pick up the, uh, from the uh, uh, initial RF, you know, right before the first tube, you can take and pick up, and it's clear all the way through. Uh, you know, you take and put a, a little, uh, demo here at the end of uh, what the new board and probe sounds like so hopefully now we have everything all finally ironed out something that we can take and confidently take and go with and, uh, and get this thing finally in production and hopefully head on to some other stuff like to thank everybody for stopping by. Like I said, there's going to be a little demo here. 
Have a good day. Use the promo code RUSH for 30% off. The Bloomberg Market Minute brought to you by Budget Blinds of Kingston. For the best products and services to enrich your home environment, call Budget Blinds at 570-287-6000 for your free home copy. With investors remaining cautious ahead of the weekend. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 89, the S&P 500 up 4, the NASDAQ Composite is up 1. The FCC has voted to ban the use of federal subsidies to buy telecom equipment made by China's Huawei Technologies and ZTE. The companies are considered security risks. The agency may require carriers now using their products to replace them. Solve one problem, create another.